How to add a field to Business Central using the simple object designer. Hey, I'm Eric, and in this video, I'm going to show you the simplest form of a customization done with the simple object designer to add a field. Um, and um, I got the simple object designer right here, and you can see that we have different tasks. And the first one is create new fields on existing tables. So I want to do that, and you we open into a list and the first thing you need to do is select a table the the table where you want to add a field so let's um let's say that we want to add a field to the sales order so i locate the sales order but there isn't really a table called sales order and this is where you got to do a bit of an investigation sometimes to figure out what is actually the name of the table that you want to add to in this case it's sales header but if you're are unsure what you can do is that you can open sales order go to the place where you want to add the field and then open the page inspector and you can do that with the help and support and inspect pages and data now we get the page inspection pane opened and we can see that we're on this the sales order page and we can see that the table in question is the sales header table 36. So with that in mind, we know where to add uh, what table to add a new field. So we can simply do 36 sales header and all fields need a number. That's just the way business central works and the uh, object designer have figured out a good place to uh, Good numbers to use so just accept what's here unless you have a specific purpose for wanting a different number numbers have to be above 50,000 and have to be below 99,999 um, but I suppose just use the number that, that's suggested here that that works every in every case so now you need to name the field and we will call this field for uh, uh, ship customer because for some reason we need an extra customer field on uh, on the sales order um, the next thing is that we need to define what type of field is this and in this case we could we could go with a simple text field that people can just type in um, or we could use a different type of field. I'm going to use a slightly more advanced field. I want to use a lookup field. Open field settings to configure a lookup field. Sure. So I open field settings. And we can see that down here in the lookup session, we have to specify the lookup table. In this case, I wanted a customer number. So I will find table number 18, which is the customer number. You can also just do like in, in any other case, you can use the search function. I have specified the customer uh, table. And what happened now is that the object designer figured out that the customer number is 20 characters long and it knows the type and all that stuff that's taken care of. We can, uh, we can create a nice caption here. So the difference between a caption and a field name is the field name is the technical name and you you're not allowed to there, there's a size limit on that one and there's also limits on special characters and stuff like that um, but you can you can go crazy in the caption if you want to so the last three things that we can do with our field here is that we can first place it somewhere and that's exactly what we wanted to do and we want the sales header. So now the object designer have analyzed your system and figured that all these pages are using the sales header. So these are the pages where you can add your new field. We were looking at the sales order. So we'll use the sales order. And uh, now we need to place it somewhere. And we need, we need an anchor and a relation to the anchor. So we will say... Um, at after and then i select go into the anchor and select and i find something that i can add this after um, and maybe i want to add it after 
What about, so there's so many fields. What about the order date field? We'll add it right after the order date field. We can see that that is sitting in the general section. I add it to the order date. And I could add it somewhere else. I could add it on the invoice. I could add it on the sales credit memo and so on. Same thing, same thing is, um, is valid. The same procedure is working for, for reports. So I could click here and it will tell me that all these reports are working on the sales header. Sales document, blanket sales order, um, draft invoice, a quote, and so on. So I could add the field to the data set of the report if I wanted to. I can also say in, in case of this field, I might also want this field to actually go to the posted sales invoice when I'm done. Uh, and I do that in field transfer. So I, I, I'll click to field transfer. And then the object designer knows relationships. So it knows that when you're on a sales header, it knows how data can travel. So in this case, I want it to travel to the sales invoice header. So I select that one and click activate. And it says, hey, buddy, sales uh, table sales invoice header does not have a field called ship customer. Should it be created now? Sure. I say yes. We get a check mark that this is activated and I close. And now we can see that I actually got two fields. So I have the fields I created in 36, but I also got the same field created now in 112. And we can see that in the placement that, sorry, in the field transfer that there is a field transfer defined. So the, the object designer knows the relationship and will write the code that transferred this field to this one when you're posting. And if I want to place this, I could go ahead and say, I want to place this on the post sales uh, invoice. I could do an add after. And what did we do? I forgot the, was it the order date? Um, I'm going to put it after the posting date. It doesn't have to be the same spot necessarily. So with that in mind, I close this one. I close this one. We can see here in the in little statistics that we have added two new fields. We have placed two fields on pages. We have created one field transfer. That's it. Let's publish this uh, to the environment win. So we say yes. And what happens now is that now it's building, it's writing all the code as if I were to write. If you ask me, hey, Eric, can you create those two fields, put them on the screen and make sure that they transfer on your posting and all that stuff. It's writing the same code as I would write in that scenario. Uh, and two things happens when it's done writing the code. It Well, first, it actually compiles and builds an app file for you. And then it does two things with the app file. First, you see up in the upper right corner here is that it you get the app file downloaded. So you can take the downloaded app file and go to your production environment if you're doing this in a sandbox and upload it to the production environment. It also, because we said yes, uh, it actually deploys this app to the environment that we're in. And, and this is my play environment, so there's tons of stuff going on here. But it's the, the top line that's interesting. And we can see that this is in progress. And if I hit a five, and I hit a five again, suddenly it's completed. So now we're done. And we can go out here. And after you deploy an app, it's always good to you know do a controller five or a reload simply to make sure that you're on the latest version. Otherwise, Business Central might tell you that somebody has changed something. So I will do that and uh, let's go to a sales order. Go to a random sales order here. And we can see that right after order date, we have a ship customer field. And I can type or select a customer number here. And if I post this guy, once it goes to the posted invoice, we can see that right after the posting date on the posted invoice, we also have the value. So it was transferred from one table to another. So that is how you add fields to uh, your business central using the simple object designer.
you can check it out on the links below. You can try it out in your own uh, environment. The demo version will allow you to add one field. Um, happy coding or happy development. Take care. Bye.